Long story short, I got myself a broken Leica Visoflex 2 at a bargain price compared to a new one. And before, of course, I wouldn't uh, spend this much money on an electronic viewfinder, but uh, this time around it caught my eye because it was so cheap and I figured that the problem it seemed to have uh, was manageable for me to fix. So that's why I got myself into this project. And this is a viewfinder itself. You can see that uh, from the outside it's totally fine. And actually it works perfectly on my M11. There's no problem with it uh, electronic wise, but uh, there is a mechanical problem and uh, we'll try to fix it. So in this video, I will first uh, disassemble it uh, to the most extent I can to show you guys, maybe you need that. And then I will try to fix the problem specific to this unit. So let's uh, jump straight into it. Hi, my name is Sergio and welcome to my channel. I'm a very happy owner of M11, but as you know, sometimes optical viewfinder is uh, not something you can work with, especially if we're talking some specific lenses, like my Voigtlander 15 millimeter. And I do have the optical viewfinder for it. Where is it? All right, over here. So I do have an optical viewfinder for it, but sometimes it's just not enough and it would really help me out to get an electronic viewfinder. The Visoflex 2 costs around 700 bucks new and to me it's just too much. It's the cost of a, another lens. So uh, I wouldn't justify buying it before, but recently I saw this uh, ad uh, from some guy that had visual flags, he bought it new, something happened, maybe he dropped it or maybe something even more horrible happened, he didn't specify. Anyway, the price was really nice and considering that the electronic part was working fine, I thought I can try to fix it myself. In the end, I managed to do it and I'm uh, happy that I did. Let's talk about the most important part of this video, which is probably the disassembly of Visoflex 2. So far, there is no uh, service manual, there is no disassembly video, there is no any information on the internet, on YouTube, about uh, how to repair or disassemble Visoflex 2. And uh, I think this will be the first video on YouTube about it. So first of all, let's disassemble it. And I'll talk uh, more about the specifics of the repair I need to do uh, a little bit later on in the video. So without further ado, let's take out everything we need and uh, start disassembly. All right, so uh, this is the Visoflex 2. The problem with it is that uh, it functions totally perfect uh, electronic-wise. So I can connect it to my M11 and it will uh, work flawlessly. The problem is mechanical because it has to fix in three positions, but in our case, it doesn't fix. It just freely goes in and out. Let's uh, disassemble it. I will show you how to disassemble it and then I will uh, try to fix uh, my specific problem. So let's go ahead and start the disassembly. Now, first of all, probably the hardest part about disassembly is removing this plate because uh, mine uh, already came off. I can show you. Yeah, because the only thing that holds this piece together is the glue. You can see the residuals here. So if you want to start a disassembly, you will have to use the heat gun or a hair dryer and uh, try to pick it with something like a toothpick so you can pop it open. So this is probably the hardest part to start with. Uh, but uh, after that, everything should be much better. First of all, we need to remove these decorative stickers. And uh, like I said, we're gonna use something uh, like a toothpick. Don't use anything metal, not to scratch surface so we're gonna pick it up and remove it we're gonna remove one and there's another one on the other side there we go and now what we're gonna do is push out this part that holds the base and the main viewfinder together we're gonna just put it in the middle and push it slightly There we go. Just pull it out. Don't lose it. <laughs> yeah, by the way, don't lose any parts <laughs> from this disassembly because uh, as of now, I haven't seen any spare parts on eBay or internet, uh, not even one, even one broken Visoflex to uh, salvage parts from. 
So these parts are one of a kind, so you don't want to lose any of them. All right, now back to our viewfinder. We can now take them apart, but you see that this uh, ribbon still holds pieces together. So let's uh, try to disconnect it. And uh, here we have four screws, standard Phillips screws. This is the size I'm going to use. All right, so now that we removed uh, all the screws, we should be able to pick up this cover part. Now for the ribbon part, I need to be very careful here. Uh, so what you want to do, you want to pick up this part up first, as such. And now you will be able to freely remove the ribbon from its nest. Here we go. All right. So there is one more part that we can put away. Now what we have here are um, more, uh, four more screws that we can remove and get access to the inside of the viewfinder because as you see, uh, the shell is a uh, solid metal. There is no other way to uh, reach inside. So let's just do that. For these four screws inside, you can see they're not Phillips type. We're gonna change the type of the screwdriver. So we use this one first. And now we're gonna switch to this size instead. Now be careful with these ones because they are very long. So beware of that, all right. Now, while removing this part out, you need to be careful with the ribbon because it's not connected to this part, it's connected to the internals. So, as we pull it out, this ribbon should stay intact. The precision is really nice, so it's got to be tight. Don't worry about that, just be steady and slow. Okay. All right. And so after removing this part, this is basically it. And uh, I'm not gonna go further inside because uh, all you have inside are the electronic parts. And if you have any electronic kind of problem, uh, for sure you won't be just a DIY that shit out. <laughs> so there's even no point of showing you how to get inside because Chances are you probably aren't gonna make it work by yourself anyway. So uh, this is uh, it for the basic disassemble. These are all the parts. And uh, hopefully if you have any kind of minor problem, just like I have, uh, this disassembly will help you to uh, take care of it by yourself without uh, need to go to the expensive or like a service center. So uh, yeah. Now, after the full disassembly, I think it's time for me to try to fix uh, my specific problem. There are actually uh, two of them. So first of all, I noticed two things that uh, are different from uh, the normal undamaged viewfinder. When in closed position, my viewfinder here is a little bit offset like this, but the normal viewfinder should be more aligned. And uh, this is uh, one problem I should be looking out for. And second of all, when fully out, mine does not stop at 90 degrees. It goes slightly past that, which is also kind of a problem I'm uh, gonna try to fix. Let's try to dive in and figure out what's wrong with it. So first of all, uh, fixing the position. The position is fixed, as far as I see, through this mechanism here. So here we have a set of four springs and uh, here are supposed to be the small metal balls. So every time when you uh, open and close it, the balls will go directly into these indents over here in this part. 
and this is the way it would fix. So you can see over here there are three indents for three positions I mentioned before. So far I see no bolts here. I think there was one but uh, it got lost here somewhere. But there should be four and uh, I think this is the main problem because also if I check the inside of the cover from the back you can see here some scratches and dents and they were probably left by the balls that got out so the first thing to do is to replace the balls now luckily i found just the right size and i purchased them from the local factory here in china uh, and uh, in case you need it the exact diameter you need for the ball is 1.7 millimeter these are the ones you're gonna need just in case you have the similar problem like me so this problem solved now the next problem is just like I said if the base is not aligned here it means here we will see a big gap which will let the balls out so we need to fix it and make it tight and the way to do it is actually uh, these parts over here that keep the two pieces together of the viewfinder the base and the top viewfinder main unit uh, they are a bit off like this so that's why my viewfinder base is not aligned because of that so what we're gonna do I will later uh, use a little hammer to hammer them down so I will put it flat and hammer these two parts down so they would uh, become more straight the second uh, fix is about the position like I said uh, in the 90 degree position it goes uh, slightly past 90 degrees so I found the way to fix it uh, and this is the responsible part this part has little so-called stoppers so over here you can see them so over here these parts do not let the main unit go past 90 degrees but in my case they do now why so it seems like because of the damage because of the drop that caused the other problems uh, you can see that uh, these are actually also bent a little bit so I don't know if you can see but uh, these little parts they are not actually straight they are bent upwards a bit too and this is exactly why uh, the unit can go past 90 degrees so just like I fix this part with hammer I will have to do the same with the base plate so I will try to use a hammer to hammer these stoppers down a bit make it straight so the viewfinder will properly stop in the right position at 90 degrees by the time I finish uh, I think I will also have to remove all the excess uh, glue where uh, it's over here right so I will remove the excess residue of the old glue here and I will try to glue this part back and also for these parts I will also remove the glue the residue of the seems like it's a double side tape so after I um, replace the balls straighten out some metal parts uh, the viewfinder should work just fine I will try to do that in a bit and uh, put it together and uh, see if it works if it does <laughs> I will show you promptly all right so now I have uh, assembled everything back together so like I said um, I put in back the balls where they can work together with springs and uh, we straightened up these metal parts here as well as inside of the base plate and now everything looks good as you can see now everything is perfectly aligned and uh, yeah let's check it out all right nice clicky response yeah and it stops perfectly at 90 degrees so uh, it doesn't go past 90 degrees like before 
it's perfectly stable all right i like it <laughs> i just got myself a really not really cheap but uh, compared to the new one a really cheap viewfinder it's a uh, quite a good deal with a bit of diy and uh, some time we fixed this as for this one uh, i see there were supposed to be screws here as well which would make sense just this is the frontal part and to just put it on a glue is uh <laughs> i wouldn't say it's really like a style <laughs> but it is what it is and i will try my best to glue it back together so it would look as if nothing had happened to it before so when i'm done should be something like this and this is basically it so i uh, put everything together it worked i also glued back all the parts like here on the front as well as on the sides it doesn't look as pretty but it does look as a whole so that's <laughs> what i wanted in the first place let's mount it and let's see how it looks like mounts perfectly without any problem and as you can see you can tilt it and it fixes exactly in the positions it should be that is uh, 45 degrees and then 90 degrees there's no extra noise or something else coming out so it's perfectly fine and it works and it actually looks pretty good pretty new it's a really win-win situation first of all i learned something and i can share it with you about the visiflex 2 how to repair and disassemble it and second of all i got it for really just a fraction of a price so basically the price of the new one is 700 bucks uh, I bought this one with the box and receipt and everything for like a bit short of 200 bucks, which is to me super nice. And in like a world, it's a great deal. <laughs> it opens up so many possibilities. Now I have Void Lander, but I'm also thinking about getting some other lenses because with this viewfinder, it makes it easier to handle it, especially the ones that are capable of focusing much closer. What can I say? It's just a reason for me to get more gear, I guess. <laughs> And this is it for this episode. I'm really glad I uh, got the chance to share it with you all guys. Hit like and subscribe, share this video with others. I, like I said, it's probably the first disassembly video of the Visoflex 2 on the internet. Hit the notification bell not to miss new episodes. Don't be afraid to fix things. This one, it was a bit risky, but I managed to do it and I'm so happy when everything works out in the end. You can just imagine. All right, have a good day. I'll see you in the next one.